Welcome back to We Are Live. I'm Travis Terrell. We had a great opportunity yesterday to speak with Eric Bischoff, the former executive producer and vice president of WCW. Yes, that WCW, the brand that nearly brought down the WWE. Uh, Eric Bischoff is doing a podcast called 83 Weeks. He's taking it on tour and he's bringing it here to St. Louis. The great guys at Band from Ringside and Glory Pro Wrestling presents 83 Weeks Live. Eric Bischoff, along with Conrad Thompson, will be telling behind the scenes stories, stories they haven't shared on their own podcast at Off Broadway this upcoming Saturday, February 23rd, on the corner of Lemp and Broadway. They will be talking about his time as WCW Vice President and even his time as WWE General Manager. Also performing, believe it or not, at this really cool event, Nathan Orton. Yes. That Nathan Orton, Nathan, of course, brother of Randy Orton, Orton WWE champion uh, and future Hall of Famer. He will be performing his comedy at this event. So make sure you guys go check it out. 83weeks.com. That's actually the word spelled out, 83weeks.com. For ticket information, you can get tickets right now. You can get a VIP tickets where you can meet Eric Bischoff and Conrad Thompson to talk about professional wrestling and living in St. Louis. I know for a fact. There are a ton of professional wrestling fans out there. So I had a great opportunity to talk to Eric Bischoff. We talked about his career going up against Vince McMahon, working for Ted Turner, and the opportunity to work with Chris Hemsworth on this really cool Hulk Hogan project. Congratulations, first off, on this podcast, 83 Weeks. How does it feel to take the narrative back? You've been the subject, I would imagine, of other people's podcasts, but now you have a successful podcast where you can start to set a lot of these stories straight. How does it feel to be able to take some of that power back? That's a really cool question. It feels great, by the way. You know, you know, for many years, those of us who have been in the wrestling industry have never really had a platform to respond to a lot of the, you know, the critics and the dirt sheet writers and the people that make a living, you know, writing about a business that they're not a part of. And now that we all have podcasts, it's kind of like, well, we, now we can give our side of the story. So it's a really, it's, 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 it's freeing. <laughs> Put it that way. Right. What inspired you to, to, to finally jump into the podcast realm? I would imagine a, a man of your skills, you've had several successful ideas throughout your career, but what, what about this podcast that finally made you sit down and get in front of the mic to make it happen? You know, it, it's really interesting. That, and again, another great question. It's really interesting. Of all the things that I've been involved with, podcasting intrigues me mm. in, in many, many ways. And, you know, when I was really young, you know, I grew up in the 60s in Detroit. And when right. I first discovered what a Citizens Band radio was, I was so intrigued by that form of communication because the only other form of communication that I knew was a dial, you know, rotary telephone on the wall. And here's this radio that allowed you to communicate, you know, without having to pick up the phone. Right. And then as time has gone on, you know, I got very involved in ham radio and, and you know, you just follow the technology. And now, you know, we have this opportunity to create our own podcast, which is really a radio show mm -hmm. in terms of its overall quality and distribute it around the world so that wrestling fans who enjoy it can enjoy it. And and I think that technology is so exciting. I feel like I'm on the I feel like I'm in the wild, wild west, you know, in a way, mm -hmm. in terms of technology. And it's it's fun to be there. And I I just enjoy it. I enjoy connecting with fans. I enjoy meeting fans, you know, at the live events that we do. Right. And it's just I don't know. It's just a cool way to keep connected. One thing I've always admired about you is that you have to have balls of steel in this industry. I've always wondered, where did you get that from? How did Eric Bischoff become Eric Bischoff? What about your upbringing made you so steely tough? Uh, because as competitive as this industry is, you have to kind of take your personality to another level. What, where did you get that from? What, what part of your upbringing did you pick that from? You know, God, you're asking all these really great questions. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not really sure. I, I think it's just the way I grew up. You know, I'm, I've always, I've always felt like the underdog. 
I've always mm. felt like I have something to prove. I always felt like I had nothing to lose and everything to gain. And, and I think when you feel like an underdog, and I don't mean that in a, you know, poor me sense. I mean, I, I enjoy that underdog status. I make mm. that work for me. But when you, when you when you look at yourself as an underdog and you know the deck is stacked against you, but you also have this kind of underlying fire that says, I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. It, it, right. It's a very uh, it's a very freeing feeling, and I've always embraced that. I, I love being in those positions. A three week, you took on the man Vince McMahon, and you, I would imagine, like any war, there are battle scars. What was the most difficult thing you had to endure? every week trying to go out there and one-up Vince and the WWE. What uh, what are some of the things that just took a toll on you over time? Because I would imagine having to play that type of high-stakes poker uh, took a toll on you. It, 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 I mean, you were, you were going toe-to-toe with the man, and you were kicking his ass, to say the least. So but I would imagine after coming out of that, that, that probably takes a bit of a drain on the individual. What what did that do to you, if if you don't mind, uh, personally? You don't have to go into details, but what was that like? You know, it's, it's interesting question again. The the competition, the head to head competition, was fun. I loved that. That took absolutely no toll on me. That fed my soul. It didn't take anything away from it. What really took a toll on me was the internal politics that became very evident during the AOL, Time Warner, Turner merger and acquisition. When when I, you know, because I kind of went into everything pretty naive, you know, Ted Turner wanted WCW to be successful, and I wanted more than anything to be the guy that, that made it successful. You know, my mission was really simple. My direction was really simple. It was really not a complicated task in in some respects. But as time went on and the mergers began to kind of manifest in ways that I would have never anticipated, having never been through one, it became really apparent to me that, you know, it wasn't about performance, it was about politics. And that really, Mm. that more than anything took a toll on me. What about the product today? I, oh, I, I, I like the product today, and I don't want to sound like a fanboy and critique every detail, but there is one aspect that that a lot of fans have noticed over time it is, is the, the, the extra scripted nature, if you will, of the current product. It, it feels like there's a little bit more constraints on the wrestlers to truly showcase their personalities. I was curious just to bend your ear on that. Do you think it's too scripted, or do you think – us as, as the fans, maybe we read too much into it. No, I do think it's too scripted. I, I do think it, it is, you know, the the current product, which is dominantly the WWE, in my opinion, just my opinion only, as a fan with a certain point of view and a certain taste, in my opinion, it is the current WWE product is too sterile, too mm-hmm. too too well produced, too slick, and it, as a result of that, it's kind of lost its life. It, I no, I don't relate to it. When it's mm. so well produced and so slick, it becomes, to a degree, somewhat unrelatable. Right. So, you know, I think one of the first things I, I guess I would try to do it. I don't like answering these kinds of questions because it's such a big hypothetical. But, completely understand. You know, one of the things I, w- I would I would try to do is make you know the promos feel more organic. Look, for example, at what's going on with Becky Lynch right now. She is awesome. Mm-hmm. Whoever and I don't know I don't know Becky Lynch. I've never met Becky Lynch. Never. Sh- I don't think I've ever shaken hands with Becky Lynch. But I I listen to her and I watch her and I pay attention to what she posts. Because she's so organic and real and believable, it mm. inspires me. You know? But that's, that's an awesome. art. 
and, and it's an art that not a lot of people have because we don't have that ability to improv anymore. You know, one of the reasons that everything is so tightly scripted and so well controlled is because you've got, you know, massive hours of television content to produce in a short period of time, and it has to be. You can't just go out there and wing it anymore like you used to back in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and even into the 90s. You can't mm-hmm. do that anymore because you've, you know, you're you're on such a tight production schedule. So it's right. Everything's changed. The business has changed. Everything evolves. You either evolve with it, find out a way to exist, or, you know, you get bitter and wave goodbye. <laughs> right. <laughs> I see you're attached to a very exciting project. I was announced at the of the Hollywood Reporter that Todd Phillips teaming up with Scott Silver for the Hulk Hogan movie that is going to be starring Chris Hemsworth. Uh, I know it's early in the process, and I know these kind of things are generally under wraps, so I won't ask for too many details. Uh, but what can you tell us about your involvement in the project, and, and what are you guys looking to get out of this movie that's already just got the Internet buzzing about Chris Hemsworth helming Hulk Hogan? Yeah, I mean, there's not much I can talk about. Um, I, I was surprised to see that to see that story break yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, wasn't wasn't prepared for that, and it's really it's, it's up to the network and the you know right. the director and the, the network to to decide what they want to talk about when they want to talk about it. So I'll just catch it. I'll just say I'm I'm grateful to be involved. <laughs> Well, Mr. Bischoff, I plan on seeing you this weekend uh, at Off Broadway. Uh, a lot of fans here in St. Louis are incredibly excited to see you come through. Again, congratulations on your podcast success. And hey, man, knock it out of the ballpark this weekend. Thank you once again. All right, buddy. We'll see you this. Uh, we'll see you Saturday. That was Eric Bischoff, formerly of WCW and WWE. Uh, of course, his podcast, Eighty Three Weeks. We'll be coming here live this Saturday at Off-Broadway. Thank you, Eric Bischoff, for the time. It was a really cool experience. Again, this is a guy that I, I grew up watching as a kid. Uh, and I watched him put together the NWO with Hulk Hogan and Kevin Nash. And it was one of the coolest moments of my childhood watching that happen. And so to have an opportunity many years later to talk to the man who was the brainchild behind all of that. That was really neat. So make sure you guys who are all big pro wrestling fans head out to Off-Broadway this weekend. I will be there. I'm excited. So come on through, say hi, and uh, let's take a few pictures. So here's the thing. I was, I was never really a huge wrestling fan. Right. Well, I do remember when it was the WWF, right? Yes, it was the WWF. The World Wrestling Federation. Federation. And then the World Wildlife Foundation uh, filed a lawsuit. And it basically forced WWF, the yeah. wrestling, to change their name to WWE. So what does the E stand for? The E stands for Entertainment, World Uh, Wrestling Entertainment. Um, So, uh, gosh, that was was almost 20 years ago. Yeah, I was going to say, I I, I remember when it was the WWF and the Mm -hmm. the kind of controversy around it. Yeah, old legal got involved. So, yeah, yeah, now it's the (laughs) WWE. (laughs) Um, The what? The what around it, Biebs? Huh? The con... Contrav... The controversy. Controversy? That is not Contra- real. Controversy. That is not how you right, say controversy. God. This is say a thing. aluminum. Right. There's a couple of things. <laughs> I want to just first off, we were here first. Here Let's we go. Let's go with that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Here no, we no, go. No. Don't say first. You were here before who? Bef- before. Well, when your George took oh, over from our George. Okay. Let's just say that. But you weren't the first what? here. No, we weren't the first here. I'm saying our language was the first. And you just made mm. the other half up. You just, but the aluminium aluminium thing. I'm just going to clear this up. Oh, Jesus! Say that again. It aluminium versus aluminium. That is so it's spelt differently, by the way. Really? Yeah. And apparently, and uh, someone can fact check this, just so that I'm not done for making up stuff. <laughs> but apparently, the guy that invented it intentionally called it two different things and did it because he found it really funny that. Americans and British people did it, so he made a... Really? Yeah, he made a medal. And now everyone calls it a GIF. A A GIF. GIF. Instead of a GIF. Yeah. Mm. But someone pointed out yesterday that it is not... It's a graphic interface file. Yeah, a graphic interface. So it's not a Jaffic. 
Yes. Into, so it, for the guy that invented it, I think he's just being contrived. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Well, there. he can do whatever he wants. He invented the man. That's also thing. very true. Does that mean that yeah. we can do whatever we want in America no. because we invented it? No. Well, if yeah. you invented it, then we 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 invented the United States. Oh God. No, you really did. <laughs> <laughs> you really did. Oh, by the way, fair file. Get your yes. submissions in. And we're gonna send those. Wall at weareliveradio.com. W A L at weareliveradio.com. It is uh, Monarchies. Monarchies today. is your favorite. Monarchies. Day. And of course, you're going to get a uh, $10 gift certificate to Buzz's Hawaiian Grill. Uh, the good folks at Buzz's Hawaiian Grill. Is it warm enough yet? Or are we at the point where it we can. Not, it's not warm enough. We're not warm enough yet. When it is warm outside, you absolutely have to make your way over to Buzz's Hawaiian Grill. They are the winners, by the way. They are the winners of our very first food truck awareness month, right? The inaugural. Oh, man. If you have not had uh, Buzz's Hawaiian Grill, you're truly missing out. When we say aloha, we say it from the heart. Mm. It signifies a way of life through unity and oneness with mankind. Mm -hmm. The sea and de na na na. That's, huh? that's a Hawaiian word. Aloha means love, kindness, and that you care. At Buzz's Hawaiian Grill, they care enough about the food they serve to handcraft their dishes. For instance, they grind the chicken, hand slice the vegetables, roll each and every spring roll themselves. Their masubi and poke, <laughs> this is killing it, man, mm. are made fresh each morning from their family's <laughs> recipe. So make sure you head on over to Buzz's Hawaiian Grill when you see their food truck out. Tell them that we are live sent you. Trust me, when it gets warm outside and you see them, you're to want to get in line quickly because it goes fast. I want to mention, too, real quick, because you did that read so well. Thank you. People might be wondering, okay, where's Sentence of the Week? Oh, boy. If they listen to the radio show. Yes. Sentence of the Week is carrying over. Oh, boy. Into the reimagined We Are Live podcast. However, we won't have it this week. Normally, right. we would have it on a Friday. That's tradition. Because you actually only screwed up like four words this past week. <laughs> Not bad, right? I decided Damn. to wait until next week. <laughs> I'm, I've logged them. They will go into next week's uh, <laughs> log as well. So next Friday, we'll debut the new sentence of the week. Oh, thank where, you. Uh, basically, for those that don't know, you screw up words. We thought quite often you did pretty well this first week, considering we... We're on hiatus for a little while. I'm a little surprised, actually. Yeah. I, did, but, uh, I read a book. <laughs> I make it into a sentence or a paragraph. It depends on how many words there are. <laughs> and you have to read it back. Uh, so it's basically all the words. A lot of run-on sentences. Uh, all the words you had screwed up previously. So we'll bring that back next week, if that makes sense to you. If it, for those who are new to the show, it's basically I'm an idiot and I talk too fast. And when I do that... I end up saying words incorrectly. I butcher them. Mm -hmm. I com I'm a complete embarrassment to my father, who is a university professor. And so to basically laugh at myself, to keep myself from crying, we do a sentence of the week where we take those words I screwed up throughout the week and we throw it into one sentence. And what you say 90% of the time, I nail it, right? You do mm. better when you get... <laughs> opportunities <laughs> like second third fourth fifth chances you eventually start to catch on to it yeah, a little bit that's fair you so you do better after a while others you are just stuck on and that's <laughs> there fair. are certain words you are stuck on yeah i just uh brewery oh god i nailed it I was what was the of... one that first when i first joined you and chris there was one word that i was like what the hell Oh, Mercury. M mercury. Mer it's Mer not. It's not Mercury. It's, it's not M U R. M mercury. Mercury. Yeah. Mercury. Because then we started having you read the elements of the periodic table. Oh, oh yes. Oh man. Who? Hydrogen. <laughs> Who? Hydrogen. Uh, 
I am just going to quickly say, uh, South City Tones finally watching. He's uh, he's woken up from his slumber. Oh, good and, for uh, him. And hey, also it's only nine forty, pal. And that's uh, the uh, the only other reason is uh, a good friend of mine, David Woodruff's in uh, watching, and uh, he is a uh, a very uh, avid historian. So I think he might have something fun to say on the fair or foul for monarchy. Uh, me and him have long discussions of governmental uh, rulings and, speaking, and things like that. Speaking of which. You oh. guys want to take a glimpse at uh, Beeb's? It's my 4th of, 4th of July, July shirt. shirt. It's Here, his happy. Let's, let's get it in close on you, Travis. Okay. Here, okay. As you can see there, it is uh, Happy Treason Day, Ungrateful Colonials on the front and on the back. <laughs> Class of 1776. Uh, it's the University year. of Great Britain. It is the year <laughs> you graduated. Uh, you are welcome, America. I, I, no. <laughs> <clears throat> there are still three fifths of us who perhaps oh, did gosh. not. <clears throat> <laughs> <clears throat> nope. Every just <clears throat> nope. <clears throat> nope. Not nope. 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 Not, nope. 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 Don't <laughs> go near it. Don't go near it. <laughs> uh, let me do that. Uh, uh, <laughs> wall at wearelivradio.com. <laughs> fair file. Monarchies. 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 Monarchies are your fair file today. Another shout out to another great sponsor we had him in studio this week, the great Dr. Ed Manyako of Hillside Animal Hospital. He does dogs on film every Wednesday uh, with Dr. Ed. Hillside Animal Hospital is a full service veterinary medical facility located here in St. Louis, Missouri. The professional and courteous staff, and many of them family members of one Dr. Ed uh, at Hillside Animal Hospital. They seek to provide the best possible care, surgical care, and dental care for their highly valued patients. Uh, this is perhaps one of the most sophisticated animal hospitals in St. Louis. I sincerely mean that. It's about your comfort as an owner and, of course, the comfort of the pet as well. So make sure you bring your animals by Hillside Animal House Hospital, conveniently located in South City on the hill. You completely got me. I was riding high. I felt so confident in myself after not screwing up words this week. And now I've been charged with reading the you library. An animal House? I did, I did. Come by the Animal House. So uh, Bring your animals. A veterinarian basically works out of an animal house. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Because, I mean, in the past, you've had issues with, uh, let's see, a, a barn mm. maybe? Cow house. What are those things called? Barns? A cow house is what you called a barn at one point. I, it's it's well. Here's... Travis, Travis, I empathize with you. There are sometimes that I, my mouth moves faster yes, than my brain. Yes. And one time I was trying to say to someone, we were sitting in a bar, and I said, "Hey, pass." I was trying to say, "Pass me a coaster," and I just said, "Pass me a beer plate." <laughs> oh. That was where I was. <laughs> And then when we were talking about food trucks, I said, "What? A, you know, uh, he's got a, um, a, a a portable kitchen. A portable kitchen. I think, it's to be honest, the food mobile. Where's the food mobile? Yeah, Where's exactly. that at? Exactly. I I have no. I I uh, empathize with you on, on these <laughs> thank things. Thank you. I'm so bad yeah. at this. Of course, we got to thank the folks. Of course, at uh, Tech Electronics. Uh, mm -hmm. Visit TechElectronics.com for all your electronic capabilities. They help build our studio. They can help build your business, become more technologically efficient. They provide systems and services that help customers work smarter, feel safer, and collaborate more effectively. We, again, would not be where we are presently without their great help. Tech Electronics is a technical service here in St. Louis, uh, and they have a network of nine offices across the Midwest. So again, if you're looking to grow your own studio, you're looking to grow your business, from the technological side, make sure you get in touch with the folks at Tech Electronics. Gentlemen, I had something happen to me a few weeks ago, and I want to get your thoughts. I talked to Gardner about this mm. off air uh, yesterday. I think I know where you're going. It was, I, look, I'm 34 years old. I watch a lot of movies. I'm big into TV and film, and I love a good story. So when I was younger, I was big into the, you know, the gratuitous cleavage shots and the car explosions and the crazy gun car scenes. And when you're young, that's what you're truly into and your tastes naturally evolve. And I was watching this movie starring uh, Mads Mackelson. Am I saying Mads' name correctly? Maybe, no. I have no idea. Uh, well, it's you, so I assume no. No, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Malcolmson, he played uh, Hannibal Lecter in the Hannibal series mm -hmm. on NBC, and he's a brilliant actor, and he's in this really over-the-top 
action film called Polar, which you can watch currently on Netflix. And of course, one Saturday afternoon, I was like, hey, it's Matt Malcolmson. I will sit down and watch this. I'm sure it's just a natural shoot 'em up type of action film, whatever. I start to watch it though, and it was incredibly violent. And there's a sex scene in the third act of the movie that's so gratuitous and over the top, it lasts at least six minutes. It's a six minute sex scene <laughs> in the third act of an action film. Sure you weren't watching Night Eyes 4. <laughs> <laughs> but again, That's what my dad caught me watching once. <laughs> but it was the first time I can recall ever going, watching a film going, this is too much sex. This is... This but, is absolutely but, unnecessary. Can we get on with the story yeah, already? Can we get back yeah. to the movie? Why is, this, why is there so much ass and breast? This is absolutely unnecessary. But do you think that there is a window of your life where like when you're, you, when you're a lot younger, there's the embarrassment of not yes. necessarily violence, but definitely, you know that thing when you're watching a movie and, and all uh, of us uh, as uh, a kid. A, a nude scene and or a, a sex scene, scene and you're with your parents. On. I mean, even when they like yes. kiss when you're a kid, you're like, like oh. Ew. And I'm, I'll never forget, I was watching uh, the great British movie, uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral. <laughs> and... There's a there's a sex scene in it, and um, I never forget sitting there with my my sister and my dad, and I must have been maybe ten years old, and it wasn't a hugely graphic sex scene, right. but my godfather is sitting there watching, and he turns to my dad and he goes, "Should um, should the kids be watching this?" <laughs> and on the old VHS player, dad awkwardly stands up, walks over, and presses the fast forward button, mm -hmm. so we watch a sex scene in fast forward. <laughs> And I'm oh like, my. I'm like, ah, oh, if only a meteor could come through the window oh, and kill me now. Oh my God. It was so brutally awkward. But then you get to the point that you're like, okay, like we all understand. Yeah, hopefully you he didn't take it as a tutorial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He was done in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so that's normal. Okay. Excellent. 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 I've excellent. heard someone. <laughs> I'm beating the average. I'm beating yeah. the average. But it was, it was such a weird moment because, again, I did feel like a true old man. And when I was simply like, okay, this is, this is too much sex. But this is unnecessary. That's this is like the nudity is just, this is unnecessary nudity. Why, why is this happening right now? I ain't now? got time for this. I need the story to keep moving. Yeah. It does. But I had that with, uh, with Game of Thrones. I'm, I haven't, I've watched two there episodes of, Games of, Th Games of Game of Thrones. Games of Thrones. Mm. Games of Thrones. Game of Thrones. <laughs> And uh, I basically watched the first two episodes and I was just kind of confused. I was like, why is this woman naked right now? Like, mm. I'm, I'm all for it. Great. But I was just kind of like, is this, is this important to, oh. the, to the movie? I, I, have we reached that point where we're just, okay. Is it, is it the me too times up thing? Is it I just don't think so. people's taste? Like, I'm not saying that you can't have tasteful sex scenes in a film. I just thought in that moment... I, it was the first time where I can recall as a as a man going. I think there's yeah, probably this an is inch. unnecessary. <laughs> but no, Tra it's Travis not. is numb to it from all of his extracurricular yeah. activities on the internet. It really, <laughs> like you kind of are. You're just like, hey, I man, don't think I a sex scene in a movie defines. I'm trying to think of how to put this. When you're an adolescent, there are certain moments that kind of define your growth, even right, like your music. Okay. Uh -huh. Music sticks with you. That, that's when you when you find your what your music is when you're an adolescent. Right. I've had this discussion with you guys before. That's why I like Oasis is going to be an important band to me no matter what because uh -huh. that was part of my adolescence. Right. You know what else is also part of my adolescence? The champagne scene in Wild Things. Oh boy, right. you remember those things? Oh dear. Body when, when you're 35, 40, that's not. Part of your life. No. Like, oh, I remember being forty and so and so. This right. sex. No, you, you. I don't know if you call. It's not growth. It's not even maturity. Right. It's just. Well, ask, it's just, ask a forty. It's not the first, or it's not. <laughs> Hold on. Anymore. Ask a forty-year-old woman what she thought of um, Fifty Shades of Grey, and she'll remember that scene. I'll tell you that much. But aren't they hitting their sexual peak then? Isn't oh, maybe. That what, maybe. What we've but been told. I, but that again. What we've mean? been told by those people, they're telling us this. Well, <laughs> those scientists, those ones that are doing climate change hoaxes. It was just so, I, I, it was just one of those things, the light bulb went off and I was just like, it does nothing for the story, mm -hmm. does nothing for the character development. I don't understand why this is necessary. It's slowing it down, the it's pace really, is it, slowed. It, it did and I'm just like, and then again, you hear a lot of these horror stories about movie sets 
especially, you know, in the post Me Too era. And so it's hard to look at sex scenes the same anymore yeah. because you hear the story of these actresses saying, yeah, there are literally 30 men on set and they're all standing around watching and I felt uncomfortable. But because I was paid to be in this movie, I didn't think I had a say or I didn't think I could have people. So that's in the back of your head now. And so now I'm like, was that called for? And I was, Do you need, it, it, it sounds like, <laughs> you need a movie sex scene counselor because yes. you've reached the point in your relationship with sex scenes and movies where in a normal relationship they need to spice things up maybe a couple's been together for 20 years or so right how do we spice things up in the bedroom you need to spice things up in your movie sex scene <laughs> life apparently I, I, look okay but maybe. Here's, here's the thing on that point of like 30 people standing around we were uh, me and a friend of mine were in Southtown pub the other day right. you know a good friend of the show and uh, focus the Will Smith movie right was on. and it's Will Smith and Margot Robbie making out on a bed right. and my friend's like I mean he's like I mean how do you how does Will Smith manage that you know to get through that scene right. without becoming aroused and I was like yeah, but you got to bear in mind, like, you're seeing it through what they want to show you. There right. are 30 people walking around, and you're saying one line, and then it's cut, and right. then go back to your trailer and come back in, and blah, blah, blah. So I think that, you know, when they're filming it, it's far less, you know, sexual than right. it looks on camera. And I think a lot of people come out, and they watch their movie once it's been cut together, and they're like, oh, that's way more sexual than I remember right. being, you know, and how they, how they cut things and the lighting and, the, and all that sort of stuff. I'm just thinking you do not need a six-minute sex in Hollywood. Oh, You're no. good. You don't, you don't, we get it. I think after 45 seconds, I think we, you have explained your point. You sound old now. now I yeah. really you didn't have to go that old. far. <laughs> Travis is like, all we need to do is see them walk to the bedroom, the door close, and then cut to the you next scene. You said two and a half, three minutes. <laughs> I mean, uh, but, okay, six minutes, yeah, that's gratuitous. <laughs> Six minutes, a, a long damn time in a movie. Yeah, it's almost changing the rating, actually. <laughs> it was yeah, very you're close. You're close, close, close to changing the rating well, at that point. And trust me, go watch the movie. For those who have Netflix, watch it and tell me if I'm crazy. Like, I, again, it was, it was only me in the moment, and I said it to myself, and I was like, okay, I'm really a weirdo because I'm saying it to myself, but someone else has to see it. Were this. you just saying that after 30 seconds when you were, you were done with the sex scene, you were like, come on, I just, I've got the blues now. I feel bad. Get on with it. I did. I, I, <laughs> do I need to start smoking a cigarette now? How does that work? Uh, before we I can head, help you out with that. <laughs> before we head into, excuse me, uh, before we get into uh fair file i want to thank of course the great folks at st louis counseling services mental health matters podcast here in this studio this is where they film it this is where they record it uh also shout out to impolite company with chris sear uh it returns very soon also here at the mid coast media studios uh tani sushi bistro big project coming up with them the scenario with matt whitener uh, also, hopefully, to be filmed here as well in the studio by Jack Apparel, ran by the man to my right, Mr. John Beebe, Red Saw Publicity, and our great friend and collaborator, Beth Hoops. Um, Mid Coast Media, of course, where we are now under their umbrella. Uh, and of course, like last night, comedy at Southtown Pub every Thursday at 8 p.m. And the great folks here at Cranzburg Arts Foundation inside the Dot Zach building here in Grand Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Also, new website. We are live. Coming your way very soon. Uh, our good friend Bruce Landau is doing the new website for We Are Live. So keep an eye out for that. Gentlemen, we are nearing the end of our lovely program. And at the end of our program, we like to do a segment that not only has swept the globe, um, I heard recently that NASA is now broadcasting this segment out into the universe in hopes of some type of engagement from other life forms. It's a segment that Barack Obama calls really damn good. Mm. It's time for the people's fair or foul. At this defining moment, change has come to America. People often ask me, what's fair or foul? Is it a segment? Oh, yeah. Is it a movement? Oh, yeah. Is it hope? Yeah. I can't say for certain. Time will be a true test of its power. But I can say, Fair or Foul is now and forever for the people. Gather around the radio with your loved ones and hold on to your butts. It's now time for Fair. We give it back to you, the people. Or Foul. That's wrong. I forgot to open the Fair or Foul file. 
What do you mean? I don't have the females in front of me. I got them. Yes. See what happened there? I pretended I didn't have it just so Garner could read it. Fantastic. No, I had already told you I was going to read them. Yeah. You forgot that already, too. <laughs> At some point as well, can we do a fair or foul? Just, Gardner, just if we take a moment, if you could just bring up my camera, which I'm now going to call... Uh, the Oompa Loompa cam. Oh, uh-huh. God, look, look at, at that. that. I mean, is that fair or foul? <laughs> I mean, like, I've, I've got a horrible complexion anyway, and I look insane. For someone who really embraces the queen, you seem to look like the American president. I, I have been on the tanning bed oh way boy. too much getting ready for this your show. Your skin literally matches your hair. What? That is <laughs> awesome. It's that just is one fan. big ball of ginger. That's fantastic. That's <laughs> sorry to fantastic. sorry to deviate. Oh man, that's all awesome. right. We have just a couple submissions. Today. Okay, it's on monarchies. I can understand monarchies. Why. Well, this is Hawaiian Grill a ten dollar gift certificate? Ooh, okay, it is your prize. Monarchies, fair. I love monarchies. Royal weddings, palace gossip, family intrigue, and the petty. Oh yeah, here for it all. I love it so much, I'm actually financially helping out a new friend I've met through email correspondence named Nigerius Nick. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Nigerian prince. And get this. He's such a good guy. Once he accesses his money in the Cayman Islands, he's going to pay me back times 10. <laughs> Amazing. Who says royalty never did anything for the people? That is... Uh, JVL Jackal. Oh my, JVL Jackal, well done. What else we got? Your other submission? Fair. Especially in Wakanda, where they obviously need someone to come in and take over ruling since they can't seem to handle things themselves. <laughs> oh. The I Triangle th- Assassin. So those are your two submissions for fair or foul. Okay. I am going a JVL Jackal. JVL Jackal. For Travis Biebs. I'm going to have to go with JVL Jackal. And I am going with JVL Jackal uh, as well. Sweep. So a clean, clean sweep for JVL so Jackal. We... Congratulations. And his Nigerious Nick <laughs> email. <laughs> I, uh, I do have a friend in the UK that, that owed me some money once. And it was, over, it was over a bet. So it was like a very long time coming. Right. And finally, I messaged him. I was like, dude, should I just give up hope? Are you over? And he's Kenyan. And he said, yeah, yeah, man. He's like, just send me your bank details. So I texted him my bank details. And he goes, a Kenyan man just asked you for your bank details. And without hesitation, you <laughs> sent them to him. <laughs> you <laughs> lunatic. You are. Yeah. <laughs> no. I Can used, you believe it? I used to clown. I, I, my <laughs> Nigerian <laughs> friends would laugh. They would go like, you Americans are so stupid. <laughs> we were getting those emails when we were kids, and you guys are the only people on earth who respond to it. You <laughs> freaking morons. Good gosh. This has been a fun show, a great Friday, a great week, first week back for the Reimagine We Are Live podcast in our brand new studios in Grand Center here in St. Louis, Missouri. I can't thank my good friend, John Beebe, for not only coming in today, but for the help he's provided to us to get this bad boy rolling. An amazing week for Mr. Gartner, a guy who has spent a good portion of his career in radio, and we asked him in a matter of a month and a half to learn how to broadcast a pod. And for those who have ever attempted to do it, you certainly understand how incredibly complicated it can be. And he just absolutely nailed it this week. Absolutely. So thank you, gentlemen, so much. Chris and I and Bree are incredibly indebted to your amazing effort. Thank you to Bree Weaver, who helped design this amazing studio, put the right touch on this studio to make it look professional, clean. And her effort certainly will not go unnoticed because if it wasn't for her putting this bad boy together, we would probably be in a basement with a bunch of uh, Jim Belushi posters behind us and Scarface <laughs> things on the wall. So we, I can't thank her enough. And of course, my great co-host, Chris Demon, who was on assignment today. He had to go promote our Mardi Gras event, which I hope you all come out to. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
We're going to get crazy. Chris and I are hosting that. So just think about seeing these beautiful faces at eight, nine in the morning while you're incredibly inebriated, while we try to mm -hmm. entertain you. That's going to be a ton of fun. So we want to thank all you listeners, all those who have subscribed to our podcast. If you haven't, make sure you do. If you would, could you also go and share? <laughs> share that photo. Could you share? Yes, share the photo. And I'm okay with you sharing the photo because it means that you care and that you're probably going to buy tickets to the Mardi Gras event. That's the only reason why I took that photo. So please make it worth my while why, by going and get tickets to the upcoming Mardi Gras events over the next two weekends. Gentlemen, it's been fun for Travis Terrell, which is myself, Chris Demon, John Beebe, Bree Weaver, the great producer, Mr. Chris Gardner, and all of our amazing fans out there. Thank you for an amazing week. We'll be back on Monday with the whole crew. Enjoy your weekend.